we're going to try to, we're going to continue and maybe finish uh, this particular portion of finding rest and peace in a restless world, part seven, the Just Jesus Evangelistic Campaign, day 1009, since January the 20th, 2017, day 1306, since January the 1st, 2016. Turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 11, verses 25 through 30. And always remember the most important part of the sermon is the reading of the Word of God. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. This is one of the reasons why you need to pray for people, because most People are proud and consider themselves wise and they are conceited and arrogant and proud and they're blinded to what God wants to do for them. They're blinded to the gospel. They are, they are full of themselves and that's why prayer is so important. In fact, you may think otherwise, but the main thing that we need to do as Bible-believing Christians is pray. We need God, my dear friend. Uh, in the situation that we're in, we need God to move. Your moving is not going to get it. My moving is not going to get it. No, 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 no. We need God. So. You need to spend more time praying. That's where the power is, is in God, not in you and not in me and our little groups and our little campaigns and our little marches. We need for God to open the eyes of the blind, the proud, the arrogant, the disobedient, the rebellious, the presidents and congressmen who think they have power in their little puny hands and they don't have nothing and if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side we would be in a mess today if this country did not have a remnant of faithful Christians praying for them they're unknown they're faceless nameless but God knows them and that's the only reason why the coronavirus has not swept this nation and killed everybody Because of how wicked we are in America and ungrateful and unthankful the whole country ought to go to hell and many in the church included led by the blind leading the blind pastors all just should go to hell everybody if it were not for the grace of God and you know I'm telling you the truth even so, Father, Jesus said, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Shall we pray? Holy Father God in heaven, we thank you for the many times that you have allowed us and helped us to pray throughout this day and throughout this past week. 
to acknowledge our weakness and our nothingness without you. For you created us, number one, and number two, you redeemed us. So, Lord, you've already done a lot for us that shows us and should remind us that we cannot do much without you. So, God in heaven, we individually confess our sins, our failures, and our faults. Unto you, for you know all about us. Lord, we pray that there will not be a proud one in the bunch here tonight who is not willing to acknowledge their sins and their sinfulness. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive us of our sins. As we from our hearts, by your grace, forgive those who have sinned against us. Crush and crucify, Lord, our flesh and the old man within us afresh and anew. Help us to die to self, each and every one of us, and fill us with the fullness and the power. The unction and the anointing of your Holy Spirit, I am amazed at you. I'm amazed at what you have done and what you're doing. And, uh, Lord, that you came the, the first time and you're coming the second time, and we look forward to it. Help us to keep the blessed hope alive. And Lord, we pray that you would crush and crucify our flesh and the old man within us and fill us with the fullness and the power, the unction and the anointing, the fruit and the liberty of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I am still beside myself about the Wednesday night prayer meeting and your throne of grace. Lord, uh, I thank you for helping us to understand how that even though we should be humble. We are free to boldly come before your throne of grace. You have invited us to do so. You have basically told us not to be scared and not to be afraid. Just come on. And we thank you so much for your throne of grace. And we are so thankful tonight that we learned that your throne of grace, uh, Lord Jesus, uh, it is your throne. And uh, I found that to be quite uh, amazing. So, Lord, help us tonight to come before your throne of grace. Help us to be humble, but help us to come boldly. And, Lord, for Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us and, and, and cleanse us of all of our sin that only you know about. And help us to repent of our sin by the power of your grace. By the power of your Holy Spirit, create within us a clean heart and a clean mind and a clean spirit and clean hands before you. For Lord, we understand that uh, you cannot and will not use us without that. And so grant us fresh unction from on high, for we realize in the words of your servant prophet Leonard Ravenhill that we can't function without unction. And Lord, we pray that you demonstrate the power of your Holy Spirit in this short time that we're together tonight. And we pray that you would save those who are lost and revive those who are saved. Give me the strength to say exactly what you want me to say and to quit when you want me to quit. And Lord, we know that the devil is busy fighting against us at all times. And we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would rebuke and bind the devil, his demons, and his host. Lord, from this place and from your people, and from your people out there and here, and help us to be prayerful, sober-minded, vigilant, and watchful now and then afterwards. For he is always sitting in that corner ready to pounce on the weakest one and the one who lets down his God or her God. We pray, Lord, for souls to be saved and Christians to be revived and encouraged at your word and by the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus Christ's name we pray for his sake. Amen. You may be seated.
writing that uh, if you can. Writing that if you can. Complete it. Ladies and gentlemen, St. Augustine said famously, God has created us for himself, and our hearts cannot be at rest or still until it finds rest in him. That's a great statement. But it is a it's a very true statement. And that's a fact. It sounds beautiful, it sounds poetic. But uh, it's, uh, it's, it's more than that. And that goes for anybody and everybody. Those who claim to know Jesus Christ and those who don't. And you will never have rest. You will never have peace. Unless God through Christ is in your life. One of the wisest pastors who ever lived... Charles Haddon Spurgeon said, how many of our sleepless hours might be traced to our untrusting and disordered minds, our restless minds. They slumber sweetly, whom faith rocks to sleep. Amen, somebody. No pillow so soft as a promise, no coverlet so warm as an assured interest in Christ Jesus. Now, beloved, in last, uh, on last week, which seems so long ago to me, because I'm so used to preaching every day, we looked at how all things have been committed to Jesus Christ by the Father. And we looked at that rather deeply. And if you have not heard that message, you need to go back and get it. It's free and online. Here are two more things, and we may not get to it all, but that we can learn from verse 27 of our passage. No man knoweth the Son, but the Father. We humans cannot understand God without help from God, someone said, and that is so true. We can't even get saved without help from God Almighty by the power of his Holy Spirit and his Holy Word. I know that, uh, uh, I know you may not like that, but it is true. You need God to help you to know him, to help you to bring, to help bring you to Christ. Jesus' statement that only God the Father knows God the Son is a condemnation in a big way of the wise and prudent. In other words, the arrogant, the conceited, the proud, the stubborn, the rebellious, those who refuse to acknowledge God's power and God's might, that there, that there is God. Those who are religious but religiously lost because they're trusting in themselves and their seminary training and they're going to and they're going to bust hell wide open because they are conceited and proud and arrogant. And we have many like that today. Have you ever been around somebody that you can't tell them anything? This is a this, these are the most dangerous people. 
people who you can't tell anything. You can't even tell them the good news. Uh, you, 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 you must do it. You're commanded to do it. But they won't repent. They won't humble themselves. Why? Because they already know. Have you ever been around for it? Listen to me. There are, there, there are a bunch of folk like this. They are the most frustrating people to be around. You know they don't know. You can't tell them anything. Why? Because they're so stinking proud. Some are dangerously, pharaohistically proud to destruction. They are arrogant. They are, they, they are, they act very foolishly. And you just sit back and you shake your head and you feel so sorry for them. You can't get, you can't get a word edgewise into them. Because they are so filled with themselves. They know better than you and in their minds and they don't have a clue. So what do you do with people like that? You pray for them. You do. You, you pull a Dr. John McNeil, Jr. He told me one time when we were inviting him to a conference, uh, we didn't put Jr. on there. And uh, he reminded us to make sure you put Jr. Dr. John McNeil, Jr., He'll be listening to you and he'll do his eye glasses like that and turn his head to the left and look at you. And he, he's the whole time determining and, 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 and figuring out whether or not you're the kind of person that he can tell something to or you're the kind of person that uh, he can just pray for and hope that you get it. He's not going to hurt himself talking with a person who is acting foolishly and thinking that they already know when they don't know. Have you ever been around people like this? You know they don't know, but you can't tell them anything. You have some family members like this. They are proud, arrogant, always talking, filled with a whole bunch of ideas, and don't know nothing. I know that's bad English, but it sounds better right now at this point. You can't help them. And this is why God hates the sin of pride, number one, numero uno. He hates it. He hates it. And you feel so sorry for these little people. They're little. You feel sorry for these little people. Wrapped up in themselves. Going straight to hell in a handbasket and don't even realize it, thinking that they're going to heaven. Blinded to the truth. The unbelieving Jewish religious leaders thought that they knew who Jesus was because they thought they knew who God was, and they didn't. When Jesus visited his hometown of Nazareth, many people there did not give him any respect. You know why? Because they knew his family. And isn't that Joseph and them down there with all them children? You know how you know how we talk about home grown folk. This is why Jesus Christ had to say, A prophet is not without honor saving his own home among his own people. And it's so true to this day. You can go home, you don't preach it around the world, you don't preach to great crowds and uh, thousands of souls have been saved. Uh, you go back into the hood. Hey, Junebug, man, I ain't seen you in a while. You, man, we, you remember we used to drink beer together, run the women together. <laughs> Boy, they don't know, they don't know. They can't. I, I can tell you a little bit different. <laughs> Yeah, you try to tell them about God. Man, oh, you know, I go down to Mount Nebo Baptist Church, you know, on uh, 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 Susan there, man. You know, I still go, you know, but I still do my little thing, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I, you still do it, don't you? No, no. Mm -hmm. 
and your family members, they all they remember is Junebug. They don't know nothing about you having Christ in your life. They can tell that you're slightly different, and they already done backed you up as a crazy person, so they don't want to hear nothing about the gospel. Now, don't come to all that Bible now. You know, the Bible will make you crazy. You know, you look kind of crazy right now yourself. So, come on, don't come on all that down. We know, we know you. We know what you know. We know your daddy and your mama and them down in the, in the cut. Okay, so don't come with all that. We know you uh, you done found God and everything. We had God before you left, so don't don't come with that now. Can't tell them nothing. Only time they go to church is barely on Easter. They don't even make it to Christmas service anymore because many churches have. Done away with Christmas services. They knew his family and had known him as a child. They thought they knew his true nature, but only God knew the Son. And he only imparted that knowledge of who Jesus is to those who approach God with humility, with humble childlike hearts and faith and by the way you can't fake it it's got to be real <laughs> you, listen to me you can't fake this man we got people in the church faking they don't know God they don't know Jesus and discerning we got about three discerning people in the church they can look at you and tell you that, they, that you don't know Jesus and look at you. They'll never tell you, but they, they feel sorry for you. And some will not even try to witness to you because they, they know you already think you're saved. And they know you're full of hell and the devil because they know what you're doing. Male and female. Dr. A.W. Tozer said, the world by wisdom he quoted the scripture, the world by wisdom knew not God. The things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. I tell the story that when I was, uh, I guess, around 10, 11, 12, for some reason I wanted wisdom. I don't know where that came from because I was down in the cut. And nobody else had any wisdom, but for some reason I wanted some wisdom. And back in those days, as you know, especially in the South, in the black community, one thing the black family had, no matter how the family was made up, they had some Bibles. Oh, yes, they did. <laughs> well, we had some Bibles, Jack. All King James, too. You got to know that. You better believe that black folk, great grandmothers who lived a long time, grandmothers, mothers, they didn't know anything about the RSV, the NIV, the AVC. It was the KJV, buddy, the old King James, with the thou's and therefore's and wherefore's. It was not hard to find a Bible in the black house in the South. Oh, no. In fact, in the black community back in the day, it served as a birth certificate proof. Your name was in the Bible. The government took it. You were born on that day, whether you had a birth certificate or not. So, and back in those days, beloved, we don't see these Bibles. I don't know where they are. I might go on a search for some of them. I know they've got to be still around somewhere. Huge Bibles, man. I mean, huge, beautifully bound with pictures of Jesus and, 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 and scenes of the Bible. This big is set as a centerpiece on the table in your grandmother's house. 
And if you were not serious about reading it, they, they didn't want you to touch it. And I went and I tried to read that big old Bible. I was I was amazed at it. And I said I, I set out to read the Bible all the way through. Young Buck. And man, I couldn't get past Genesis chapter two. I got all mixed up in the therefores and the wherefores and the thous and these and oh what is this right here? But then on December the 19th, 1979, a young man came to my dorm room and showed me from the Bible, that same old King James Bible, how to be saved. And when I saw Romans chapter 10, verse 9, and Romans 10, 13, I got it. I got it at that point. And I got saved that night. December the 19th, 1979, from an old King James Bible. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I said, what? I thought you had to do this and that and the other. I was deceived. I was bamboozled, and I had run amok. And then somebody in the church, they gave me a little Bible. I was in the Air Force at the time, and I had a little green Bible. Had great eyesight at that time, so there was not a problem. I started reading that. But then somebody, I believe it was Michael Lewis, gave me one of those little Sunday school Bibles, Old Testament and New Testament. And, buddy, I started reading that thing from cover to cover. And, man, I couldn't put it down. I was amazed. Why? Why? Because the Spirit of God was in me. I was born again. I was saved. The reason why I couldn't understand it years earlier is because I was not born again. I was not saved. God's nature is of another kind from anything with which the mind is acquainted. Hence, when the mind attempts to find out God, it is confronted by obscurity. It is surrounded with mystery and blinded by the light no man can approach unto. You need Jesus. I want to go back to that verse uh, that deals with the Spirit of God. And, uh, and, uh, I want to bring it down, bring it out to you, bring it out to you a little bit more. The world by wisdom knew not God. The things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. I had the Holy Spirit of God in me when I got saved December the 19th, 1979. And even though I may not uh, was able to I, I may not have understood everything oh buddy I couldn't get enough of that Bible I was just constantly amazed at every page that I read because of the Holy Spirit of God in me being uh, born again and saved at that time you need God to get to know God you need God to help you to come to Jesus. You need the Holy Ghost of God, my dear friend. God's nature is of another kind from anything with which the mind is acquainted. Hence, when the mind attempts to find out God, Tozer said, it is confronted by obscurity. It is surrounded with mystery. And blinded by the light, no man can approach unto. A consideration of this truth led some thinkers of the past to conclude that since it is impossible for man to discover God by means of any faculties he possesses, 
God must therefore remain not only unknown, but unknowable. What these men overlooked was that when God desires, he can and does reveal himself to men. And he has done that in my life. And I believe that he's done that in the lives of millions of others. And it is the most wonderful thing on God's green earth. The Spirit of God is able to make the spirit of man know and experience the awful mystery of God's essential being. Now this is A.W. Tozer, and so you know you gotta, you gotta get your thinking cap on. He goes deep every time. It should be noted that the Spirit reveals God to the spirit of man not to his intellect merely. The intellect can know God's attributes because these constitute that body of truth that can be known about God. The knowledge of God is for the spirit alone. You can't fake this. You can read a book about some things, but you can't fake the true knowledge of God. Such knowledge comes not by intellect, but if you will, by intuition. Our inability to understand Jesus without revelation from God is a cause to trust in Him. It is deeper than what you know. Do you know God tonight, dear friend? Do you know Jesus Christ as your Savior? Because if you really do, you know God in a very intimate way. Uh, here's a little test for you on whether or not you're born again, whether or not you know God. Can you continue in sin without something beyond your conscience bothering you? Can you commit fornication or adultery or get drunk or get high on drugs or steal every day, lie all the time, lie to your family members and it doesn't phase you? Or is there something beyond your conscience like a person saying, get it right, confess it? Repent of it. Go and apologize. Don't say that again. A person is speaking to you. Dealing with you about the evil that you're doing. And it's the most terrible feeling in the world. Beyond your conscience. If you have that going on in your life. You might be born again and you might know God. And I believe you would know that. But if that's not going on in your life, if sin does not bother you, if cussing does not bother you, if looking at pornography does not bother you, you just suck it up and eat it up. If getting drunk does not bother you, if committing fornication does not bother you, if stealing somebody's money or somebody's cheesecake out of the refrigerator does not bother you, if lying on your family members or lying on your children does not bother you, there's something wrong somewhere. You don't know Jesus. And you don't know God. And you need to get to know Jesus today so that you can know God. If you struggle with reading the Bible and understanding it, you just don't understand any of it. Just like I was when I was 10, 11, 12 years old. It's boring to you. Altogether boring you can't stand it. You might not be born again. And you need to get saved. 
And so, ladies and gentlemen, if you're not saved tonight, if you're with us and you have never been born again, you have never trusted Christ as Savior, may I lovingly introduce you to the Savior so that you can be saved tonight. Allow me to show you how to put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ like somebody showed me over 40 years ago so that you can get your soul saved from sin, the power of sin, and the punishment of sin, which is hell, and from the awful pain of not knowing God. First, dear friend, accept the fact that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's laws. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Second, accept the fact that there is a penalty for sin. There is a punishment for sin. For the Bible says in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. We die physically because of sin. Our bodies go to the grave. Our soul goes to hell or heaven, depending on whether or not we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God who took away the sin of the world. Thirdly, accept the fact, dear friend, that you're on the road to hell right now as I speak. What I'm trying to get you to see that not knowing Jesus Christ as your Savior is a very dangerous situation, and this is a very serious matter. You know that you're going to die. You have already accepted that. You may not be that sure about hell, but Jesus Christ is the one who preached more on hell than any of the other prophets in the Bible. So I think you need to take that seriously. Jesus Christ preached more on hell than he did about heaven. I think you need to take Jesus seriously. For Jesus Christ said in Matthew 18, 8, and here's how serious he was about it. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee, it is better for thee to enter into life halt or maim rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. Hell is a very serious matter. And you don't want to end up going there on a humbug. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou you shalt be saved. So hell is bad news. But I have some good news for you tonight, as always. I like the Billy Graham motto, always good news. I cannot say that my preaching is always good news, because I just told you the bad news, but I always end up telling you the good news. You don't have to go to hell. You will die one day. But you don't have to go to hell. You can go to heaven when you die. And here is the good news straight from the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ, the same Jesus Christ who preached on hell more than anybody in the Bible. The same Jesus Christ said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world. That includes you, my beloved, the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And just believe in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ, dear friend. Believe in your heart that he suffered and he bled and he died on the cross for your sins as the Lamb of God who took away the sin of the world. Jesus Christ is that sacrificial Lamb Really, God wrapped up in the flesh. God died for your sins. Now, 
talk about love. What kind of love is that? You talk about somebody loving you. Nobody loves you, my dear friend, like God. There's nobody on this earth that will die for you. But God wrapped himself in the flesh. Emmanuel, God with us. He looked around. Nobody else was going to do it. So he had to do it. There was nobody on earth who would do it. So he had to do it. Jesus Christ, the, the Lamb of God, died for your sins, my sins, and took away the sin of the world. He died and was buried and rose on the third day. In a few days, we're going to be celebrating what we call Easter. We ought to call it Resurrection Sunday. Good Friday was not good for Jesus and it was not good for God, but it was good for us. That's why we call it Good Friday. We celebrate on Good Friday, but Jesus died on Good Friday. But he got up early on Good Sunday. For you and for me. And it's all free by the grace of God. Besides that, you don't have enough money to pay for it. You can't do enough good to pay for it. We all have to come humbly to the cross. The proud and the arrogant, the conceited, and uh, the intellectuals may not come. Don't wait on them. Don't follow them. Make sure you come to the cross because there's still room for you. Right now, tonight, right where you are, that cross is there for you. All you have to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in your heart that he died for your sins, was buried, and rose from the dead on the third day. Pray and ask him to save your soul, and he will save you. And here is God's guarantee. Here are the two verses that changed my life. A man who cursed and swore that he would never preach like his dad because he wanted to fit in with the game. And now I've been preaching the gospel for 40 years and couldn't stop if I wanted to. Woe is me if I preach not the gospel. Romans 10, 9, here are the two verses, and 13, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou you shalt be saved, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And dear friend, as simple as that, and as simple as that, as that sounds, that's how I got saved. December the 19th, 1979. I didn't get baptized that night. I did not speak in some unknown tongue that night. I didn't feel uh, a tingle down my spine. I did not shout and run around the room. I did not give any money to anybody. I got saved. Jesus entered into my life. He saved my soul. And he changed my life. And he's done it for millions and he can do it for you tonight. Just simply believe in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in your heart that he died for you, was buried and rose again. And call on his name, pray and ask him to save you. And he will save you tonight. Follow me in prayer right now. Repeat after me phrase by phrase and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I admit that I have done evil in your sight. For I have taken your holy name in vain. I have broken your Ten Commandments by lying and stealing, by lusting after people and things 
by dishonoring my parents. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. Because I have committed more sins than that. As I now believe with all of my heart on the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe in my heart that he died for my sins, was buried and rose on the third day. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul. I'm calling upon you. And fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of my sins past. Help me to turn from my old evil life and help me to follow you in the new life. Lord Jesus, for it is in your name I pray, amen. Now, dear friend of mine, if you believed in your heart, on the Lord Jesus Christ as I did December the 19th, 1979. And if God can save me, if Jesus can save me, he can save you. Because I was running in the opposite direction. And by the grace of God, he ran me down. And somebody who was not looking to get saved got saved. And certainly somebody who was not called to preach I mean, who was not uh, wanting to preach, was called to preach, and I've been preaching ever since. That's the power of Christ uh, in the life of an individual. And I'm not saying you're going to be called to preach. You might, but uh, your life will change by trusting Christ as Savior and praying and asking Him to save you. So, dear friend, if you believed in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross, for your sins was buried and rose on the third day, allow me to say to you congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my pamphlet, my article, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door, Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me of any man into end, he shall be saved. He shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Dear friend, if you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior today, please email me at dw3 at gospellightsociety.com or one of our many other emails and uh, points of contact and let us know. We have some free material that we want to send you to help you grow in the faith. If you have a prayer request, please send that in as well, and we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. Until next time, my beloved, God loves you, we love you, and may God bless you real good is my prayer. Let's all stand for our closing prayer. Holy Father God, we praise you, Lord, and we thank you for what you have done here tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the hundreds who gather on from all around the world. And, Lord, we give you the glory, the praise, and the honor for what you have done, for what you're doing, and for what you will do. And, Lord, we pray that you'll bless the remainder of our night and help us to continue to get the rest that we need, but at the same time continue to share your holy gospel in other ways. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. God bless you, dear friends. Until next time.